Live, all right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our early edition of church here. And we're checking audio. And so if anyone's watching, anyone logged in here, you can see in the comments up top here, you can see Tara, you can see in the on my phone, um, if anyone's logged on. We're just checking the audio right now. You can see Tara. All right, beautiful. Okay. There we go. All right, so we're in it. We got action then. So we're going to get this started. We're just handing the phone back over to our daughter. Keep her occupied along with the El Nino. And uh, we're going to get started here in a moment of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this day of rest. And God, I ask you as I'm about to preach, God, I ask you to give me the power of your Holy Spirit. Work through me, God. I ask you to open the minds and the hearts of anyone who's listening, God, and and I ask you, God, so that your word may just resonate with us and help us to transform and uh, become more like you, God. And we just thank you for this day. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So today's title is Living with Dignity. Living with Dignity. And as we begin the, the message, I want everybody to just think and picture Somebody who you know who fits that title. Somebody who you know that fits the title of a person who lives with dignity. And I want us to just think and picture that person and just meditate on the things that we value in that individual or individual. And as we contemplate on that, and we think about that, right? Many of us, we want others to value us. We want others to respect us. We want people to look at us and, and see a vision of hope. They, we want them to, to, you know, see the good parts of us and see the things that we're doing. And we, we want them to value us, right? And as we see others that we value or that we look at and we see these, like this person has integrity, this person walks with dignity, and we examine what it is that the person does. We examine the behaviors more than the words of the person. But yes, the words are very important too. How they respond to other people, how they interact with strangers, right? Um, even the facial expressions. Uh, you know, are they welcoming? Do they have a Do they have a smile on their face? Are they Are they you know joyful? Things like this, right? That that so not everything is just tied into the behavior. A lot of it is in in in, in our mannerisms. It's in our words. It's in the way that we carry ourselves overall. So as we examine the behaviors and the, and the way that others uh, interact, we also need to be examining ourselves. And checking in with ourselves and making sure that we are walking in a in a way of, of integrity and that we're not just carrying on not being conscientious of what we're doing and how we're acting, right? You know, some of the characteristics of that is obviously practicing honesty. You know, are we honest in our affairs? Are we honest in the things that we're doing and behind the scenes, more importantly, when nobody else is available to see what's really going on? And it's just us and God. Are we being honest within ourselves? Are we practicing self-honesty? Does our word mean something? When we tell somebody that, like, this is what we're going to do, does it actually happen? Are we keeping our word? Are we, are, we, are we making up stories or the things that we're saying are actually true? Are we embellishing on things and, you know, maybe taking something that, that happened and then over-exaggerating it to, to, to create a greater importance. And all this stuff comes down to examining who we really are as people. And, and listen, as we're watching this video today, and some might be thinking, man, I'm not out of place for this, and I'm still noticing defects. Check it out. We got to keep coming because we're a work in progress. We're, we're, a, we're a transformation process happening, right, throughout our lives. And so... So we need to be able to, that's why the Bible tells us in, in 2 
uh, Corinthians 13, 5, it says, examine ourselves, right? It also talks about examining ourselves in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, right? We need to take a look at ourselves. We need to examine ourselves. Where am I at? What's going on? And when we, when we detect things that, that we know aren't pleasing to God or things that we want to work on, then we need to go and confess those things and try to repent from those things. And a lot of that examination is going to take us deeper than inside of ourselves to explore some of the hurts and the things that have gone on and some of the characteristics we may have picked up along the way living in this fallen world that led to self-preservation as we thought. But as we become closer into a relationship with Christ, we see that those old things need to be shed and, and removed from us, right? Being service-minded, being willing to help others, right? Genuinely caring for other people, genu genuinely being able to, to connect with another human being and, 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 and understand their pain and understand their, 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 their trials and the things that they've gone through and, and how they might be feeling about certain situations, even if you can't fully identify. People that are giving, people that are generous, people that are willing to like go out of their way for other people. These are all things that we think about in, in integrity, amen? Amen. And we, we look over at Matthew chapter 5, one of the things that we mentioned was keeping our word, which is also a biblical principle. We're going to read over at Matthew chapter 5, verse 33. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time. Now that's Jesus talking. He said, you have heard that it's been said of them of old time, yes? So what Jesus is about to say, which is what uh, many of the things that Jesus said were repetitious of what was written in the Old Testament. So he said, listen, you've already heard this thing said before, and now he continues, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oath." That's right. He's saying, basically Jesus is saying, keep your word. He said, whatever you said you're going to do, you go ahead and do that. Amen. So it's, a, so it's a principle, right? We need to be who we say we are. So when we say, oh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm dedicated to this, or I'm loyal to this, or I'm, or, I'm, or, I'm, or I'm with this person, like that means we don't turn around and like, because some feelings came up, we switch up, right? Because listen, check it out. Commitment is something that, that we continue doing even after when you said you would do it, that feeling has long passed. And now you feel differently, but you still committed to that process, Amen. So, do we think we're created by God to walk in dignity? Of course we are. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God said, listen, I made, I'm, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Right? We're made in the image and the likeness of God. So, therefore, we are created in that. Then, then we went through the fall, right, where, where we sinned and we, and we fell into this. And then we're, now we're redeemed in Christ, though, Right? Now we've been redeemed in Christ and we need to strive to, to, to try to get back to that image and the likeness of God, right? To, to, and how do we do that? We emulate. You know, my daughter the other day said to my wife, she said, oh, you know, mama, I want to grow up to be just like you when I get older, you know? And, and, and so she mimics the things that her mom does and she watches the things and she watches how she loves and she watches how she serves and she watches how she takes care of other people. And she pays attention, right? And so, and, and she watches how like my wife will cook and, and do all these things. And, and, and so my daughter will, will imitate my wife and she'll follow her around and she'll do those things and she'll come and take a plate from you and bring it to the, to the sink. And, you know, she's four years old and, and she'll take the trash off your table and like, you know, and she wants to help and she's, and she's always showing love, right? Because she wants to imitate her mom. And so what she does is she watches what her mom does and then she acts on those things. Just like for us, family, we need to watch what our father is doing and we need to practice what the things are that he does. Turn over to Ephesians chapter five. We're gonna read verse one and two. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, mm. and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offspring and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Amen. Amen. It says, be 
ye therefore followers of God. Yes? Be ye therefore followers of God. And he's talking about imitating. It says, just as dear children. So just as we watch, you know, our daughter imitate her mom or, or, or you know, my son who will imitate me, right? We, we need to do the same thing with our father. But notice what Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 5. He says that, he says, be you therefore. Be you therefore. Well, what are we talking about? Because when we see the therefore, that means that Paul has attached what he's saying to something that he, re that he wrote previously. So when we look at Ephesians chapter 4, right, and we back up into, into the beginning of, of, of chapter 4, we see that, that right away Paul starts out with an I therefore. He says, I therefore. So now he's continuing another thought, right? And we can run this all the way back to the beginning of the, of the book, but we're not going to do that. But just to kind of point a few things out, right? In chapter 3 and verse, let's pick it up in uh, verse 16, right? So chapter 3, 16 says, That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Where, where is the strength supposed to come to? Within his spirit. In the inner man. By his spirit in the inner man, right? So so listen, that we that we we're gonna be strengthened in our innermost selves by who? No. The Bible tells us by him, by his spirit, mm -hmm. by the spirit and the power of God. Mm -hmm. See, we see we most importantly we can't limit, right? Sometimes in our carnal minds, we want to limit the power of God to truly transform the innermost self. And what, what, what it is, it's the power of the Holy Spirit. And yes, God is laying out some footwork for us to follow, right? So check it out. We're going to keep going. It goes on to say in verse 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. What are we supposed to be rooted and grounded in? Love. We're to be rooted and grounded in love. That's the primary spiritual principle, right? That's the ultimate level of for anybody to get to on a spiritual basis is in love, right? Love our neighbor as ourselves. To love the Lord God with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul, right? It starts with that. And we pick that up in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5. So that's not a New Testament principle. These are principles that God has always had. God's principles has not changed. So we need to be rooted and grounded in love. And a lot of us struggle with that. A lot of us come in here, we have a twisted sense of what love even is, right? We don't, we don't always understand love. Listen, some people have been, have been molested. Some people have been beaten. Some people have gone through some serious, significant trauma in their lives, right? And even some of us that have it, maybe we were just slightly ignored or whatever the case is, right? There's been some things that have happened in our lives that have twisted our understanding of what love is. Amen? Amen. So we don't have a full understanding of that. Some of us get caught up in fornication so bad because we're thinking that that somehow equates to love. When we're, when we're confusing the lust with the love, right? And all these things that like, that, that the enemy has twisted and, con and contorted in this world to just cause confusion, right? So a lot of us need to be taught how to love. A lot of us are taught to, to, to love just by coming into, 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 the, into the body, right? We start interacting with other believers and the, and the believers show the love. And this is why it's so important for us to be rooted and grounded in love. It says, it says that after we've been rooted and ground, grounded in love, it says we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth, and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth all knowledge. That you might be filled with the fullness of God. Now unto him who is able to make you do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be the glory. The church by Christ Jesus through all ages without end. Check it out. There's a lot right here, right? And there's a lot to break down in a sermon. But look at what he's talking about. And he says, and to know the love of Christ. Right? How are we going to know the love of Christ? Because it just talked about the, the brothers and sisters being rooted and grounded in love, right? So we're feeling the love of Christ, not only just through the spirit, but through the love of the other Christians, amen? So we need to be around each other, loving each other up. Check it out. It goes on, it says, 
And the, the, by that knowledge, right, it says that, that to know the love of Christ, it talks about that, that passes all knowledge, right? The love of Christ is going to surpass anything that we can even wrap our heads around. We can't even come to the level of understanding of the love of Christ in our, in our carnal minds, right? This is something spiritual that happens inside of us. And now, you know, you might be thinking, where are we going with integrity, right? But check it out. This is how we get there. So check, so listen, this is what God's telling us, right? It says that, and it says, now unto him, talking about Christ, that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Can you imagine? God is trying to do exceedingly abundantly all that you could think. So check it out for the newcomer when they come into the recovery process and we're talking about make a list of the stuff you want to have in one year and, and then in a year let's come back and visit that and you're all like, man, I settled for less. Because you had no idea where God was going to bring you. You had no clue the things that God was going to do inside of you. And we're not talking about external stuff. We're talking about internal things. We're talking about changes and, and, and modifications, right? Hey, and replacements that God is going to be doing within us that's going to transform us into new people. And we're going to be blown away. Things that we don't even understand, right? And it says, it goes on, it says, according to the to the power that worketh in us, which is the power of God. So then we get to chapter 4, and then that's why Paul's talking about the therefore, right? So remember, now we started off with be you imitators and followers of God in chapter 5. Now we had to back up because he talked about a therefore, and then we came all the way back to 4, still talking about the therefore. So then when we start in chapter 4, and we work through these, through these verses, starts talking about the body, right? Starts talking about our believers. When we go to verse 1 through 13, it's talking about the gifts. It's talking about how Christ ascended into heaven. But he also, first, he died and was buried, right? Everybody with me? He went down into the ground and then he resurrected. So that's our hope, right? It, it's showing us, it's giving us our hope. And then it's talking about how he gave us gifts, right? How the gifts came down for the edification of the church. So let's, look at, let's take a look at the why. Why did all this, why is he talking about this? Verse 13 says this. It says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure and the stature and the fullness of Christ. That's the goal for these gifts, family. That's the goal for the things that God's putting inside of you. He wants us to come into the unity. He wants us to come into the faith. He wants us to come into the fullness of Christ, the full character of Christ. It says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. By the slight of who? Men. We have some men that have created some doctrine, family, trying to take you off the word of God and, and bring you into some twisted areas. It talks about this. It says, in cunning craftiness, whereby they live and wait to deceive, man. And this is what these folks are doing, right? They're trying to deceive you. So, so God's trying to build you up and to have that understanding and to have that full knowledge. Amen. All right, let's turn over to, let's check out verse 17 here. Verse 17 through 22, and we're going to look at the how, right? So how do we become imitators? See, we're looking at the dignity piece, right? And to have dignity, we want to be following Christ, amen? amen? So we trace it back and we figure out, okay, what's going on? <coughs> the blessing. We need to have Christ in us. Christ came and died, he resurrected. Christ gave gifts to the church because he wants us to come into the fullness, right? So now we're looking at the how, how man. How do I practice these principles? How do I do this? This I say therefore, testify in the Lord, that henceforth you walk no more as other Gentiles, walk in the vanity of their mind. Talking about being separate, talking about not doing the things you used to do. You know, sometimes we have people that come up and they, they go back out and they relapse, man. And it's like, well, what were you doing? Who are you hanging with? Who are the people that you're associating with, right? You cannot be deceived. Bad company corrupts good man as family. We need to separate ourselves, right? We need to stop acting how they act. It says that, and he says these people have their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who, passed, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lavishness to work all uncleanliness and greediness. The you have not so learned Christ, right? You're a work in progress. He says, if so, be that you have heard him and have been taught of him as truth is in Jesus, that you have put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, 
It's talking about, listen, it's talking about our conduct when it says conversation in the King James. It says you put off this old stuff. You stop living like that. You stopped these things, okay? The things that now it takes time to come into the fullness of Christ. That's why we read the preceding scriptures. We got to give ourselves a time frame to go through this stuff, but we need to strive for it, right? Putting off the conversation, old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. Those things that we used to do, they were to fill our own voids, right? Those things that, the, the ways that we used to act, like I was talking about in the beginning, that's self-preservation. What we thought, what the world taught us, that was going to keep us safe. So we continue to practice those things, thinking that somehow that brought safety, but it brought more spiritual sickness. It brought more emotional sickness, right? Caused more turmoil in our life. God's saying, listen, get that stuff out of here, man. Verse 23 says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now it's going to give us some stuff to do, right? It says, Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man the truth with his neighbor. We are members of one another. So God knows you lie. He knows you're a liar. So stop lying. He says, put that stuff out of there. Stop lying. Tell the truth. Tell the truth with your neighbor, right? Confess your sins. Let them know, listen, this is where I'm at. You know, stop acting like you got it all figured out. And you're good. You don't have to do that anymore. You can let your God down, man. You can trust God. He's going to work through you. He's going to protect you. He's going to guide your heart and your mind. You just got to practice these principles, right? You got to pray and ask God for some courage, man. I'm trying not to do this. Goes on, says, be angry and sin not. Let the sun not go down on your wrath. Doesn't say don't be angry. Doesn't say don't be angry. It says no. It says be angry, but don't sin. Mm. Don't mess your spirit up because something happened and now you're mad and you're going to cause a separation between you and God because of what somebody else did or some other circumstance that you have no control over. Mm. Let it go. Let it go. Don't go to bed all twisted. You got to pray and get through some stuff. Amen? Amen. says, let him that steal, let him that stole, steal no more. Check it out. But rather let him labor, working with his hands, the things which is good, than he may have to give to him that needeth. Let him that steal, steal no more. Talking to you, Peter Pan. Run around here justified, thinking you can steal from the rich and give to the poor. Remember Peter Pan? Had the little angel thing falling around, the little angel light thing falling around. Oh, that's no big deal. That's this just for children. It's it's cute. What kind of stuff are we teaching, man? Look at the world falling crazy. God didn't tell Peter Pan, go ahead, man, go steal from people and give it to the poor. He said, No, stop stealing. Go get a job, and what you create from that, give that to the poor. Amen? Amen. So we live in a twisted world, even in, in the things that we perceive to be innocent, right? Let him that steal, steal no more. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Hey, listen, stop talking negative. Stop talking negative. Listen, we, our words have power. If, 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 if we're called, you know, if we're like, oh, I'm such an idiot, or this person's such a jerk, or this and that, or, you know, this situation stinks and everything else, guess what? All that stuff's going to come true. Stop that communication out of your mouth. Stop gossiping. Stop doing all that nonsense, right? It says, let no corrupt communication come out, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. See, we should be ministering grace unto the hearers. We should be ministering love rather than saying, oh yeah, you know, this, that, 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 and getting all nasty. No, we need to be, we need to be focused on the positive, right? We need to bring Christ into the situation. We need to say, listen, no, listen, look at the, look at the benefit of this. And, and, and like try to help people, right? Try to minister that grace to them. Like, hey, sometimes we need to remind people like, listen, do you realize that Christ died for you while you were a sinner? They died for them too. It says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. 
Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another. Be what? Kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sakes, has forgiven you. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to the world. That's right. Be world. not conformed to this world. Talking about you're stuck, whatever worldly stuff you got attached to and you're so comfortable with because the world has dumbed you down with that kind of stuff, whether it's some kind of entertainment or whatever it is that you're caught up in, don't be conformed to that stuff. Don't be conformed to what you think people want to be, what, who they, who you think they want you to be or who they think you even are or who you pretended to be, right? We need to let go of that nonsense. Check it out. Be not conformed to this world, but... But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. Does it say the renewed mind? It says the renewing, yes? It says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your, your mind is going to take time to be renewed, family. So we got to hold on, right? We got to hold on. We're gonna got, we got two more verses we're going to hit. Two more sections of verses we're going to hit. And then we're going to be wrapping up. We're going to go to Titus chapter 2, verse 11 through 15. Titus 2, 11 through 15. It says here, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Appeared to who? All men. All men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. We're supposed to do what? Deny, yes? Deny. We're to deny that stuff. What happens if I don't deny? I'm stuck in the sin, amen? This ain't a magic trick. That's why I'm just trying to point this out. God doesn't say, just say my name, say my name, say my name, and, and you're straight. No, Jesus says, why you call me Lord, 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 and not do the things I said to do? In Luke chapter 6, verse 46, he ain't having that family, right? So we can't just profess Jesus and think we're straight. No, we need to deny some stuff. We need to do with some stuff. Check it out. It says this. It says, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, and we should live righteously, and we should live godly. Where? In this present world. That's where you should live this stuff. No matter where you are. It says looking for the blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God. And our Savior Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for us. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. And purify himself of peculiar people. Check out what he's doing here. He gave himself for us. Right? Right? That he might redeem us. Jesus gave himself, his life, to bring us closer to him. For what purpose? Just for us to walk around here and continue to sin? No. It goes on, it says, and to purify unto himself. We're a purified people family, right? We're to be purified by Christ. It says a peculiar people, which is like a separate group of people. He's purified. And check it out. We're supposed to do what? It says... We're supposed to be zealous of good works. What are we supposed to do? Be zealous of good works. Be zealous of good works, to do good works. So as we've truly accepted Christ into our lives, we should be so passionate about doing good for other people. That's what it's talking about in the scriptures. That it's not just receiving the gift and being like, uh, so we should be passionate about being zealous for good works, which means being zealous about living in integrity. Live your life right, is what it's telling us, right? Be a man of honor. Be a woman of honor. Be a woman of dignity. Be somebody who, who can hold your head up high and know that you're serving God and that nothing else can touch you because you're doing the right thing for the right reason when no one's looking. How? Because it's rooted and grounded in love. Because I know that Christ loves me. I can't even understand the level of love, but the level that I can understand motivates me to go and do the next right thing. Amen? Amen. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority and let no man despise thee. Listen, check it out. Sometimes you start hitting people with some of this stuff in some of these modern day churches and they want to get offended, right? God just told you, listen, go ahead and rebuke them. Hit them with it. Amen? Amen? Closing verses here. You ready for this? Titus chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. So check it out now. 
He goes on and says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities, powers, and to obey magistrates, to be ready to do every good work. He's telling his people, don't be sitting here rebellious. You know, you got clean doesn't mean you can start running around here running amok. No. You need, to, you need to start honoring some authority figures around you, right? You've been rebelling long enough. Knock it off. It says, speak evil of no man. To be no brawlers. Don't be getting in no beefs. Don't be getting these arguments. Don't be getting these back and forths. Don't be getting the fist fights, right? It says, don't be speaking badly about each other. It says, but be gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. So don't be trying to show that you're some killer. Show that you're meek, right? Show that you're humble, man. We all, right, listen, I'm a work in progress in these areas. I'm still learning how to be more meek. I'm still learning how to be more gentle. I got a long way to go. A long way to go. But listen, I'm in the process of renewal. Amen? Amen. We're in the process here, man. Still in the process of learning how to forgive. St still in the process. Of, but listen, we got to be humble enough to identify where we're at. Knowing that I need Christ on a daily basis, moment by moment, I need him to, to live in me, right? And I gotta and I gotta create an honorable vessel for Christ to come into. So I can't be in here all diseased up and and, and and like, you know, trying to get Christ in me. I gotta be willing to do some work. I gotta be willing to dig into some stuff and be able to uproot some of this stuff, right? And get rid of it and be humble and realize, listen, you know what? This stuff is this stuff's gotta go, man. Right? And not allow my fear to try to hold on to it. Like I gotta hold on to my edge so people know what time it is and all this other stuff. I gotta be, I gotta have faith. Faith. And know that Jesus loves me and he's protecting me. Even when I don't fully see it because I don't always understand it. So even when I feel like I'm getting hit, just know that Christ got me. Doesn't matter. He's protecting you. you. Gotta have that kind of faith, right? For we ourselves were also, this is the hit, right? It says, you yourselves will also sometimes foolish. Okay. Sometimes disobedient. Deceived. Serving diverse lusts and pleasures. Meaning many different lusts and pleasures. You were living in malice and in envy. You were hateful and hating one another. Talking about before Christ. Anyone identify this? Having that kind of stuff in your spirit? Chasing all these different kind of lusts? Talking about when you were in active addiction. Right? Talking about when you were stuck. But after the kindness and love of God and Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Check it out. When you got clean, you didn't get clean. You didn't get rescued by God because you were practicing righteousness. Chances are. Amen? Amen? Check it out. Where's the newcomer, right? It, were, you, were you doing the right thing out there and you deserve, God said, here you go, you deserve rehab, you're a good guy? No. He said, man, you're destitute, broken, busted, disgusted, lawless, filthy, dirty, rotten, living in muck and mire, all about you, could care about nobody else. And God said, listen, my child, I'm picking you up out of this. I'm picking you up out of this. And I'm going to send you out in a place where you can get some help. It's a free gift, man. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of the regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So let us acknowledge today where we are in this process of renewal. Let us strive for integrity. Let us practice integrity today. Right? A practice of integrity. Live in a principled life. Many of us that are in recovery, we know that we need to live by spiritual principles. But many in the church don't realize it. People in the 12-step program, they understand it. We got to relearn morals and values. Right? We've come to a place of surrender where we're like, man, I can't do it no more. The world has defeated me. I'm powerless. Without God, I have no power. I need to turn to him in step two, amen? I need to turn to God to regain my footing. I need to go and examine and I need to get rid of some of this stuff that doesn't serve God. See, a lot of Christians 
ain't being taught this stuff today. The spiritual principles are being left out of the message. It's all about grace and, and how God has called. And he has. But God didn't call you for no reason. He said, I called you to redeem you. Right? To sanctify you, he said. To, to make you a people that is zealous to do good. How many people do we see that are walking around that, are, that have so much passion about trying to help somebody? How many people do we see willing to go out of their way that are so passionate to try to, to, try to give back, to try to reach somebody, to try to, to try to bring them closer, right? I'm not talking about misguided passion. I'm not talking about that like you, you burn yourself out running around because you're not really plugged in the Holy Spirit and this is some awesome other stuff, right? I'm talking about a true God-given passion with wisdom and discernment of how to reach and when not to reach and how to, and listen, how to, what to say and what not to say. I'm talking about when God's working through you, right? I'm talking about the passion when you're really trying to like connect to some people because it ain't about smothering them and, and being all up on them. No, it's about knowing when in your timing, right? Of when to interact and when to allow the process when to allow the process. But is this stuff being taught to our brothers and sisters in the congregations? I pray that it is. Nevertheless, let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. Thank you, God, for, for your word, God. Your word that you speak through me is spoken to me as well. And I'm just grateful for that. I'm grateful for the scriptures, God, and your Holy Spirit and the power and the and the love that just just surrounds me and, and guides me as I go into your word. And it's it's just a time of, of peace, God. And, and I'm just so grateful, God, that you are forgiving and loving and tolerant and willing to teach and willing to give us the, the your power, God, to transform us inside out, God. I pray for an increase in faith. I pray for, for all of us, God, an increase in faith. I pray for all of us an increase in our belief and and God, to help us with our unbeliefs, because many of us believe God, but, but there's some things we just don't believe, or we just was, we're stuck in a time of unbelief in certain areas, God, where we might believe that you can fix this area, God, but you, you know, that maybe we're not ready to let you in on this, on this side, God. So I pray for our belief and our unbelief, God. I pray that you strengthen the, the listeners today, God. I pray that you give them power that, 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 surpasses any understanding, God, the ability to overcome mentally, God, and, and emotionally and spiritually, God, and physically. I just thank you, God, for, for all of your blessings. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.